how you interact with the people around you. And I was just talking with him, and it was a funny story because last, night, uh, last Sunday night, I had to run to Dollar General, and it was kind of late, about 8 o'clock at night. And, and I'm standing there, I, I honestly was just buying, um, I think I may have been buying a snack cake or something, I don't know what I was doing. I really probably didn't need to be there, I was bored. Let's call it the boredom, it was the boredom run. So, so I'm standing up there in the middle of Mount Vernon, and, 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 and the, it's the one right in the middle uh, over across from the cemetery there in Mount Vernon. I, I was just standing there minding my own business, and this person came in that I had prayed for their grandfather at the hospital, and she said, I was looking all over for you yesterday. I said, oh, Okay. I said, well, I said, I only work Monday through Friday. And she said, yeah, you prayed for him. And all of a sudden, this kidney function kicked in. And, and they were just, <laughs> and, and you know, I just had this kind of morose minute with my brother just talking about that. And, and you know, it just took me aback because here I am checking out. And, 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 you know, there's all these people around for some reason. And I don't know, Dollar General in Mount Vernon, time to go is at 8 o'clock p.m. There's all these people around. And, and, and she just tells us in front of everybody that his kidney function started, to, uh, kicked in right after we prayed. And I was like, Wow. I don't think I was expecting that. And so I thanked her for telling me and told her I'd continue to pray. And I went outside and I just was like, just kind of dumbfounded because I needed that at that moment. I needed to know that some of the things that I was sharing with the people that I share with on a weekly basis was happening. I shouldn't need that. I shouldn't need people to tell me that but sometimes I'm weak. And sometimes I need to hear those things too. And, but it was just so reassuring. I hadn't told anybody but my brother, who is a thousand miles away. Not a thousand, probably 500. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep, I'll be, I'm getting my dad's old storytelling tricks where everything's always exaggerated. So Paul, I apologize. I'm trying not to do that. So, so. Anyways, he's about 500 miles away. Could not have controlled that situation. And, and yet, somehow, this person decided to go out of the $6 generals that she could have gone. She went to that exact one at that exact time that I was uh, going to it to give me that exact news that I needed. God is good. God is good. But we need to grow. I need to not do it for the applause. I need to not do it for those things. I need to do it because Jesus Christ has put that inside of me. And, and, and with as exciting as that was, I need to grow beyond that. I need to preach the word where there is no applause. I need to be able to understand that. So I'm still growing. And that's the same thing with the idea of growth. Paul says in uh, 2 Peter 3.18, Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter said, my bad. Peter said in 2 Peter 3.18, Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's kick it back a few, uh, a few chapters. We're going to start where he started at the beginning. In 2 Peter 1, and we're going to start out, we're going to just read a little bit of this, and then we're going to go with each part. It says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Next. And because of his glory and excellence, he, he has given us great and precious promises. And these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Human desires, like that desire to feel appreciated. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Next. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control 
It, it, it doesn't show until it does. It doesn't just get noticed. And I think that's why we all fall off. The same reason we quit diets. We all fall off because, you know, if we're really honest with ourselves, it's because people aren't noticing. They, they start, they, they, we, we've worked so hard. We've starved ourselves. And no one notices. And it's nothing against them. I mean, it is hard to notice until, until you get to a certain point. But we, we then talk ourselves out of it. And, it's, but, but, and I equate those things because they're easy examples of what this, this spiritual growth is like. You don't notice it until you do. And then all of a sudden, people are like looking at you in a different light. I want to read this. This is the thing that I was given this week that I've been, I, that this is all based on. Because I was reading this and I thought, this is so good. It says a tree always grows in two directions. It says every tree grows in two directions at the same time. Downward growth, which is gravitropic, and an upward growth, which is phototropic. Gravitropic, the downward growth is called gravitropic, and this is where the tree grows downward and gets a lot of resistance. It is full of dirt, it is damp, and it pierces through the resistance to grow its roots. Phototropic is when the tree finally springs up from the ground. It grows towards the light, which is phototropic. And here there is no more resistance, and this is the part of the tree that everyone sees. This analogy is true with every successful human being. That in the dark moments of our lives, when we are struggling to make it in life, when we have to wake up so early in the morning to get things accomplished, when we have to go to bed late because we want to make it in life, when we are full of dirt and the place is damp and there's lots of resistance and nobody sees us. But when we eventually spring up from the ground, from all of the struggles that we have been through, then everyone sees us and wants to identify with us. Let's take a think about that. So just like a tree has to grow and struggle, its roots going through the ground, it takes a while. That's why they sell, many, of, many times we don't plant little seedlings, do we? we? We don't plant the seed into the ground with a tree. We, we buy trees that are already grown, hoping that that will make a difference. Out where my mom is, she, she wanted a, uh, a cherry tree, a Japanese, or Japanese maple or something like that. I think it's Japanese maple. So it's a, we'll say it's Japanese maple. It was. There you go right from the source. Japanese maple. Quest for truth there. Japanese maple. And, and, and the thing is, is she has the worst ground in the world to put it in. It's, it's, it's clay. It's awful. It's not good ground. And, and let me tell you, when I was digging that out, it took everything I had just to get a three foot deep hole to put this Japanese maple in. I dug and I scraped and I worked and, and I was out there for three hours digging this hole trying to get this thing to work. And I put this maple in and I made a mistake. I put the same ground back on it. I realize that now. That was my mistake. I put the same ground back on top that I had just chipped out for three hours to get this thing in. It was early, I was trying to get it done. I, I wanted to go do something different. And, and so I just piled this back in there and, and I gave it a good couple chops. I tried to chop it up with the end of the spade you know, and get it, make it easier for it to get through. But if you know anything about clay, what happens? It goes back together, doesn't it? It comes back together and then it starts to dry out. It's really hard. It choked that Japanese maple out. We had bought the pre-grown seedling and so it looked nice for a little bit but it choked it out because the roots couldn't get down to get the water that they needed also because she wouldn't water it but anyways <laughs> the roots couldn't get down they couldn't get the moisture and the nutrients that they needed because clay's not very good in nutrients it's the fight of every farmer here in this area is dealing with that clay and, and, and so, so this Japanese maple, we watched it, it just stunted in its growth. It would just stay out there the same size. And then we watched the leaves start to fall off as it died. And eventually it's just a set of sticks out there. And I had to chop it up and mow it down. 
And thus ended the great experiment of the maple tree. Um, but, but, but now, if I went back and I did it now, I would make sure that instead of the same dirt, we put back potting soil rich soil that would feed that tree and give it the ability to grow roots that might be able to penetrate that soil. It wasn't ready for the soil that's in. Why am I telling you all this? Because what I do up here is I'm preparing soil for you. I'm telling you where it's going to be tough in life. I'm telling you the right way to grow. I'm, I'm giving you these different ideas from the Bible that, they, that, they've, that these men have imparted from the grace of God. I'm, I'm giving them back to you to tell you that the soil is going to be tough. You're going to have to do things that are contrary to the nature of this world. And you know what that's called? That's called growth. It's easy to be heavy. You just eat. You don't have to do anything different. You follow your body's natural thing. It's hard to get into shape. I have to go into a building. I have to lift weights for, three, for 30 to a minutes to an hour if I want to see any progress on what I'm doing. And I have to do it regularly. The same thing with growth. You have to do something different than what, you're, what you as a person are used to doing. You have to believe different. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to step over the side of the boat if you want to be where Jesus is. Growth is tough. But I've got good news on that area. We don't have to do this on our own. Next slide. We don't have to do it on our own. We're promised in Philippians that, dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it's even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He's working in you. There's something in that seed. There's something on the inside of that seed and on the inside of that seedling that tells it to keep on growing roots. That tells those roots to keep on seeking water, to keep on pushing through the depths of the soil to find nutrients. There's something on the inside that's telling that seed to grow. There's something on the inside of you that's calling you to grow. And it's empowering you. It's giving you the ability, the desire and the power to do what pleases him. That power is in all seedlings. But are they going to give up when the going gets tough? When the ground gets clay, to, I don't know what you call that, but when the ground isn't as yielding as potting soil, are you going to give up? When you don't give up, that's growth. And God is there to tell you to keep on coming, to keep on coming out, to keep on stepping out, to let you know that there's always new mysteries to find in Him. That there's some, that you can, you can be better, that this will get easier one day. What happens if you resist all that? Well, there's a couple different things. Let's, let's go back to our verse up there in uh, 2 Peter. It says, The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful will we be in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their own sins. God says that if you don't want to grow, you're short-sighted or you're still blind. Remember Paul, he was blind for three days. But there came a day after the man, a man of God prayed for him that the scales came off of his eyes. And he started to relearn everything that he thought he knew. There's a reason it's called rebirth. 
And the sad part is, is what we don't realize that with that rebirth comes up us having to relearn how to do life. To regrow up, so to speak. And God said that's normal. You're going to have to relearn everything you learned in the previous time before you were wine on how to live. Because I'm going to ask you to do things differently. I'm going to ask you to talk to people differently. I'm going to ask you to live your life differently. That's normal. That's okay that it's normal that you suddenly find the things that you used to do detestable. It means that you opened your eyes according to this verse. That, that your blindness has been cured. What happens if you refuse to open your eyes? Let's talk, let's talk about that. Well, he talks to, Paul talks to Timothy about that. He, he wanted Timothy to know that there's going to be some people that refuse to open their eyes. And, and he said, these, these people, they're going to do some damage because of the short-sightedness of other people says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. Next verse. They will be unloving and unforgiving, and they will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. Now, this is, that's the interesting part on that last verse there. Love pleasure rather than God. And in other words, he's telling Timothy that these people know God, but they've chosen pleasure. Ooh, wait a second. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's pulling it back into the church. We thought that all along here, maybe it was talking about the world. No. Paul's talking to Timothy about people in the church that were refusing to grow. They saw all these other people growing around them, and so they developed ways to look more mature in those people's eyes by scoffing at what those other people are doing, calling them fools. Because you know what? They're embarrassed that they didn't grow either. They didn't take the time to do it. It's kind of like how we, what we sometimes write off people that are doing things better than we are. I'm not preaching to, the, to anybody here, trust me. Right? Anyways, you know, it's easy for me to look at Rusty and say, well, sure, I could do that if I had his time. I, he's, he's very strong if you've not seen his muscles. <laughs> but anyways, no, I, but that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, he... He, he's worked at that. That's something that he works at, to, to, to have strength and to, and to work out. That's, that's something that Rusty has worked at many times. I didn't come by accident. Neither does this. And when, when people aren't doing those small things outside, when they're not trying to grow, when they're not forcing themselves to do better, they begin to be like these people. Next verse. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. They stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. I believe that this wasn't just written about women because I see this in a lot of men too. That they, they start running after every new thing. You know, they start looking for that supplement that provides, that's going to promise bigger muscles quicker without them having to do anything. It's how people get started on steroids. That they, they, they're looking for something so they don't have to work as hard. They're trying to circumvent the process. They're, try, they're, they're ashamed that they didn't grow when it was their time to grow. Well, or maybe they just don't want to put in the effort that they see. These teachers oppose the truth just as Jonas and Jambres opposed Moses. That was the two sorcerers that made their sticks into uh, 
snakes uh, in the in the palace of the king of Egypt back when Moses went in to confront him. Uh, and they have depraved minds and counterfeit faith. That, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday everyone will recognize what fools they are, just as with Jonas and John. But you know when that day is? It'll be in the resurrection. When all of a sudden the, 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 they've, they're rising and going to meet Jesus in the air, And these people that they thought were great things were still on the ground and not going up with them to meet Jesus. Someday someone, everyone will recognize the fools that they are, just as with Jonas and Jambres. They'll see that. It'll be a visual reminder of why growth is so important. So what are we growing towards? The beautiful part of this is that that same set of verses answers it. It's such a complete set of verses that we we were talking about there in 2 Peter. It's that same, the, the same set of verses, it ends it really well. Let's go. It says, so dear brothers and sisters, verse 10, dear brothers and sisters work hard to prove that you really are among those that God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, he also, and then in Revelations it says, and he also said it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. He calls them victorious, those that have chosen to continue to drink and to grow and and become more like God. He said that they they are victorious. They're working for a crown. As Paul said in another set of verses, that they're striving for that, for that laurel, that wreath, that says that they are excellent. So keep striving. Keep growing. The big takeaway from today is realize that this is a choice. This is a choice that you make every day of the world. It's a choice to keep working on yourself. It's a choice to keep striving after God. You have to choose to grow. It doesn't just happen. It's not, it's not, you just don't become it by being in, in the near proximity of people that are growing. You have to choose growth. Like so many other things in life, you have to choose to be a part of it. It doesn't just happen because you're near it. Let's contemplate that as we wrap up here with the song. You call me out upon the water, the great
Let me walk upon the waters wherever you may call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you may call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of It's one of the most dramatic stories of the Bible where they're out there on the waves and suddenly Peter sees Jesus and, and, and filled with faith Peter says Jesus if that's you call me out to you and Peter did okay for a while we've talked about this a lot before because it, it, it's 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 such a, a an amazing story because Peter actually walks on the water then the waves looked high and the storm looked fierce. And suddenly it became a different story where Peter was sinking in the water. But I believe that the rest of Peter's ministry was spent getting back to that. Getting back to who he was that day. When all he saw was Jesus. And he chose to step over the side of a boat. A fisherman believing that he could walk on the water. This wasn't the tax collector. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the revolutionary. It wasn't any of those other people that Jesus called. It was the fisherman who knew better that stepped over to the side of that boat and said, I see you out there, Jesus. I, bid me come to you. Denying everything that he knew up to that point, he stepped out. It's that same root that causes us that growth. And when we see the results of that growth that we're getting, I, I, I really believe that Peter was as surprised as anybody when he stepped out over that thing. Because it's, when we see the results of that growth start to manifest in our lives, and suddenly we're doing something that we couldn't have even imagined before. Hmm. I wasn't born a speaker. I have a lot of social anxiety. I don't share this too often, but, but I believe in the message that we're preaching so much that it causes me to step out of that, of, of my natural inclinations every week to be able to talk to you all. And that's, a good, that's good enough for me to know that God can use anything that we give Him to bring Him glory. Would you stand with me? Father God, I thank You where You help us to overcome our fears and to do the impossible, to do the things that we're scared to do. I thank You for each and every person here who You're continuing to plant Your Spirit in and finding new avenues inside of their heart for you to be used. I just ask that they would continue to choose growth every time, every day, that they would continue to, to press on to your kingdom. And I just ask that your peace would be over them this week and let them examine themselves 
And, and Father, for those that have, give, that have maybe given up, I ask that you reignite that fire to be able to want to grow, to want to be better, to be want to look more like Jesus each and every day, that you would reignite that fire that's inside of them and say, I choose Jesus every time I choose Jesus. I'm going, to get, I'm going to quit choosing myself. I'm going to quit choosing uh, what's easy, what feels good, what everybody else in this world expects of me. And I'm going to choose Jesus. I just ask that you continue to let us be made, molded and made into your likeness. That we, as we see through that, we see through the glass dimly. But what we see in that glass becomes Jesus. It may not be the exact <laughs> an exact perfect picture but that you would continue to, to wipe away the dirt and the smudge that's on that mirror until we look like you. Thank you for an opportunity to share with my friends again this week, Father. I just ask that, you, ask that your peace and your guidance and your blessing would go with them in all that they say and do this week. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.